now we're going to start a video um, on cloud computing. The, that this is what the late uh, Steve Jobs um, has said about cloud computing. Good morning. You said in your opening ground rules that there were lots of holes, uh, holes that Apple couldn't necessarily do themselves without this community. Um, as a visionary and your team, you could spend a couple minutes either sure. writing or talking about those holes. Sure. Um, <coughs> Much of the great leverage of using computers these days is using them not just for computationally intensive tasks, but using them as a window in the communication intensive tasks, as you know. And never have I seen something more powerful than this computation combined with this network uh, technology that we now have. So not only networks throughout an organization, but of course the wide area networks through the internet. And I just want to focus on um, something that's very close to my heart, which is living in a high-speed network world um, to get your job done every day. Now, how many of you manage your own storage on your computers? How many of you back up your computers, as an example? How many of you have had a, a crash in the last, you know, three years, four years? Right. Okay. Um, let me describe the world I live in. Uh, about eight years ago, we had high-speed networking connected to our now obsolete Next Hardware running running uh, Next Step at the time, and because we were using uh, NFS, we were able to take all of our personal data, our home directories we call them, off of our local machines and put them on a server. And the software made that completely transparent. And because the server had a lot of RAM on it, in some cases it was actually faster to get stuff from the server than it was to get stuff off your local hard disk because in some cases it would be cached in the RAM of the server if it was in popular use. But what was really remarkable was that the organization could hire a professional person to back up that server every night and could afford to spend a little bit more on that server so maybe it had redundant disk drives, redundant power supplies. And you know, in the last seven years, you know how many times I have lost any personal data? Zero. Do you know how many times I've backed up my computer? Zero. I have computers at Apple, at Next, at Pixar, and at home. I walk up to any of them and log in as myself. It goes over the network, finds my home directory on the server, and it just is, I'm, I've got my stuff wherever I am, wherever I am. And none of that is on a local hard disk. Now, what's really interesting to me is the gigabit Ethernet's coming. With gigabit Ethernet, it is faster in every case to talk to the server than it is my local hard disk. And one of the things I'm really excited about is to look at that personal computer and take out every moving part except the keyboard and the mouse. I don't need a hard disk in my computer if I can get to the server faster. See, because I look at that network connection as NFS dial tone. I get internet dial tone and NFS dial tone over that wire. And I don't care how it's done. I don't care what box is the other end. We have these MOSFETs at Next, right? Big one. And half a million bucks on it. It's worth it. We do a lot of software development. Nobody ever lost anything. Nobody ever worried about that stuff. But you can have smaller ones. But managing a network like this is a pain in the butt. Setting it up, getting it all to work is really complicated. One of my hopes is that Apple can do for this new type of network, not so new, but for the average person it's new, with gigabit Ethernet technologies and some of the new server stuff that's coming down the pipe, and some thin, thinner hardware clients, hardware clients that are thinner, not necessarily software, that Apple could make that as plug and play 
for mere mortals as it made the user experience over a decade ago. That's, that's one of the things where I think there's a giant hole. And I can't communicate to you how awesome this is unless you use it. And you, what you would decide within a, few, you know, a day or two is that carrying around these non-connected computers or computers with tons of state in them, tons of data and state in them, is Byzantine by comparison. So there's about three or four things like that where I think there is enormous opportunity. And where I think, you know, a lot of times, both in people and in organizations, your greatest strength is also can be your greatest weakness, or your greatest weakness can be your greatest strength. Apple has been highlighted as having an incredibly great weakness of being totally vertically integrated. Well, it doesn't make those semiconductors, but it makes the hardware, it makes the software, it controls the user experience, it does the marketing and distribute, it does the marketing. And many people are constantly calling for Apple to get out of the hardware business because of that weakness that they perceive. I don't agree with that. I perceive it as a potential weakness if not managed right. I also perceive it as Apple's greatest strength if managed right. Let me give you an example. Um, plug and play. I mean, to get anything done in the PC industry seems to take years. Plug and play was an initiative that was launched five years ago. You know, it took two years to get it all together between Microsoft and Compaq and then Intel followed them, finally got Intel in the fold. And here we are five years later and still it doesn't really work. Every little thing, you can imagine how long it will take them to make a thin client standard and servers that plug and play with thin clients easily. I mean, we're into like, you know, the third millennium. So the fact that Apple controls the product design from end to end, hardware, software, gives Apple an incredibly unique opportunity. It's the only company in the industry that does that. An incredibly unique opportunity to tackle some of these really gnarly complex problems that could have enormous potential advantage in the market if we could solve them. And I think solve them literally a half a decade to a decade sooner than you know, the 93-headed monster out there in the Wintel space. Now, they have their advantages too, don't get me wrong. But I think one of our great advantages is that we can really have the vision that spans all the disciplines, we control all the disciplines to actually implement a vision much faster if we can get ourselves all going in a few directions. That would be sounded great. What did you notice that was interesting? By the way, this was in, what year do you think this was in? 1997. This was far, far before the App Store, the iCloud, um, iTunes, I think, wasn't there or had started. I, I don't know. Most likely not or barely starting. But Steve Jobs was a visionary. He had the vision and he made all of these uh, possible. Um, and he was talking about cloud computing. But he didn't you know, use the word because that wasn't uh, what uh, we knew it at that time. He was talking about um, not needing a hard drive on your machine because uh, gig e, this, that's gigabit ethernet, uh, is fast enough for you to go and get your resources from a server rather than read them from a hard drive. Um, and a lot of these things are now very much possible. So your uh, tablets, let's say, are very thin devices with not a lot on them. Uh, a lot of the, uh, your information, you're reading it from the cloud, right? If you have some, bought something from the App Store or from the Google Play Store, um, you can go and play the movie um, from there without having to store all of those on your device. So that's um, the, what he was talking about. process everything on the server. So you need a way to access those devices. 
Um, and some of what you're keeping on your devices is for privacy purposes. That's one. And you also need a way to prove who you are, right? You need to authenticate with the servers. So you need, um, you need that. Uh, your clients are becoming very, very thin. With uh, like my cell phone, I can do a whole, a whole lot of things. And I'm not doing the processing on it. Most of the processing is happening elsewhere. Uh, from a computing perspective, you do need a bit of processing, um, wi which is like pretty necessary. Um, or else you're gonna, you can technically do all the processing somewhere else, but then you're then resending all of those things. If I, if I just have HDMI cord okay. in my house. And I would just plug it into somewhere and it will access my computer. Well, you can. Like, the devices are becoming very thin. A, a new device that got uh, uh, that started a, less than a week ago, Google uh, Chromecast. Chromecast is a thin device similar to this yeah. with an HDMI um, input. HDMI, um, yeah, input, uh, output, actually. So you plug it into <coughs> the HDMI input of your TV and using your uh, iPhone, iPad, your uh, Google tablet, your Android tablet, uh, your um, even Chrome on, a, on, a micro, on Microsoft or on anything. Um, you can cast any video that you have. It could be from YouTube, it could be from a browser, it could be streaming video, my soccer games, for example. You can s cast them through that on your TV. And a lot of like TV, providers and whatnot are not happy with that. Um, so that is a pretty thin device. The only thing that it has is a small, very small processor. It has um, wireless capability because you're sending stuff through wireless. Yeah. So um, things are getting pretty thin and most of the processing is happening elsewhere. It's a matter of time until things get <laughs> even smaller. Um, and well, what else? What else did you notice in the video? What were you surprised about? That's something that, from 1997, all these ideas were being discussed. Yeah, that's what is surprising. Is there are so many like trends that really came and were kind of something that I saw as the aspect of like the future. Nobody even uses that anymore. And but it's all like even so, what they're talking about is how they been like implemented in such a great extent. Yeah, a lot of. Uh, it's interesting that from a technology perspective, a lot of this technology is seen uh, from within industry, but until it gets commercialized and reaches people, it takes some time. Uh, they want to test it and they want to do it at a massive scale so that the costs go down, right? Um, so he was saying, I can't uh, explain to you, you need to actually do this and test it by yourself, okay? That's why today you're going to be doing and testing by yourself. In the afternoon, when we're working with the Amazon Cloud, uh, you're going to be creating your own web server, you're going to put in your own web page on it, you're, uh, and you're going to see all the different levels uh, of cloud computing. Um, so I told you now, but I'm, you're going to learn by doing it uh, yourself, as, as he's saying. Um, OK, so what have we learned? What have we learned about? Uh, cloud computing. What is the problem that cloud computing uh, is trying to solve? So altering the capacity, so changing, changing with varying what? Varying demand. Okay, so you have varying demands for resources at different times. How do you adjust to that? Uh, do you buy or do you Rent. So it's a method of renting. It's a method of renting resources uh, from uh, companies that provide those resources, and only only pay for them. You only pay for them when you're using them, basically when you're renting them, and when you don't have, uh, when you don't need it, you return those uh, resources. And uh, it's elastic, so uh, you only need 
to have a bit of over provisioning to protect yourself with a possible increase in demand. But as we said, when you do set, see that demand going up, you immediately increase your capacity so you're safe. Okay, so you're saving a lot of money, um, you're saving a lot of power, of, now you're not owning those servers. Plus, another thing that we saw in the video, he doesn't need to back up anything. It's not his responsibility. Whatever he has on those resources is guaranteed. Someone else has to deal with it, okay? Some, someone else has to deal with all the hassle of maintaining, of powering, redundancy and all those, those things, and that reduces a lot of the cost, especially for the uh, smaller companies. It gives them room for competition. They don't need to own those massive resources for them to be doing their uh, work. Whatever they need, when they need it, they can rent it and still be able to do uh, to do their work and bit by bit uh, grow. And competition is good for everyone because it uh, makes everyone uh, improve their uh, their technologies, lower their costs, and uh, people buying the technologies and devices that we have. Okay. Um, okay. Any any questions about um, like the different pieces of the cloud computing? Uh, why it's being used 